Hey cuties, it seems you won't be getting a gangster reprint, and instead received a transient summon featuring partial selections from every other Christmas event not covered this year. Sorry for any Tita and Timorg fans out there, but I'm personally not too upset. N no reason in particular. Anywho, let's hop right in. Oh my god, he's fucking dead! Or is he? Ryota will never quite have the same extreme worth as before due to Behemoth's variant release. Both have the overwhelmingly strong utility of half-filling an ally's charge meter. But Ryota does it at a worse range with greater team cost. He's not out of the ring yet, bringing valuable, albeit unreliable amp that many board wipers would enjoy. He can also equip the Beast Tamer card EXP booster, which is certainly more helpful in Shiva Dungeon board wipe setups than the token booster either he or Behemoth can bring. And good luck finding Behemoth in support at all, considering he's competing for the same Aether spot with Advari. If you do have both of these charge fillers, you can pop a 30 units charge every phase. If you had to pick one though, I'd go with Behemoth. Either way, Ryota served his time well as Shiva's butt plug for three years, and deserves a break. It takes profound talent to disappoint as sorely as Taurus Mask does, speaking for both his role in the story and his kit. His main, and only, function is to provide facilitative effects to the allies he moves beside. But whoo do these effects under-deliver. An activation rate boost, a hot, a minuscule kick in damage, a minor common damage amp, and a bit of charge fill. He brings a bit of personal damage, but his need to move, paired with a lack of guarantee ability and range, makes it almost as pathetic as Taurus Mask as a person. That's all point and laugh now. <laughs> Lo and behold, the exemplary Colin Claire. He perfectly reaches requirements of the assignment and goes absolutely no further. With guaranteeable damage and evasion piercing, Judaya is a can't-fail unit for dailies and other tall formable quests. His ability to equip either Seed or Blossom Booster complements this. He has some terms of service though, if he falls below a certain health range, which he naturally chips himself, he loses Bite. His own emergency damage amp and mitigation can be helpful in case you fail to clear, but you're better off just ensuring his skill is true. He's alright, but his main plus sticks out, being forgettable as a calm player as he is a character. No. Just... no. Ugh, where do we begin with this hot mess? Wow, look at that movement denial! Pretty good range and inflicted every turn, so it's gotta count for something, right? But Aze can't reactively deny movement because of his timing, and can't deny everyone because of his charge meter conditional. Okay, okay, okay. But look at that meaty damage mitigation! Except his resistances are incomplete and selfish, and good luck activating his melee resistance with his one square attack range. Okay, fine, fine, but the amp looks pretty okay. Except it's not reliable and has limited range of effect. Some units are designed straight up to clog the summon pool. There's really no reason why this should exist. Virtual. Magic damage! Seems plain on the surface, but Bertro achieves it in a roundabout way. A board-wide vulnerability that is conditional to a second vulnerability he inflicts. He has another conditional amp only he can personally enjoy, which can make his damage even scarier. If he can actually activate it. Since he does have some unfixable unreliability built in, he may fail to reach his peak damage for a few of his targets, so his counter tanking measures are appreciated to handle the fallout. Not too many frills, but because of his ways of achieving amp is just quirky like that, he boasts impressive synergy potential. Now this is how you write a Sonic Gozi, make them down to earth in their own unique way. Jurong, my beloved. You're as beautiful as the day I lost you, with your unique role of being a manually triggerable board wiper, yet to find a substitute. You make a grand entrance with charge ready, but unlike every other turn one board wiper, we can actually give you the exact cue to set off your fuse. Enemies are devastated by your surprisingly high damage given your small attack stat, which also means your damage disproportionately benefits from stat boosts from seeds, blossoms, and ARs. You are arguably the most important cornerstone to 1, 2, 3 charged board wipe setups, since you can handle turn 2 or 3 when the other options are scarce. Post nuke, you can heal tank and positionally stall. Appreciate it, but 
Not exactly complimenting your total destruction game plan, but maybe that's what I need in life right now. Thank you for healing these deep wounds of mine. True or wrong? This is pretty interesting for a banner, because there are some strong highlights, but they have some serious asterisks. You can boil it down to three categories of units here. Be experimentally and conditionally superior, the mix of matched farming staples, and near literal rotting garbage. For the average player, I recommend against pulling this banner. You have plenty of alternatives to the farming staples, you really don't need to give the garbage your time of the day, and if you're watching this guide because you're unsure what to think about the units yourself, then you probably aren't interested in experimentation. For the nerds out there interested in hearing another nerd's opinion though, I'd say it's a pretty good banner to pull. You guys probably already see the potential hidden within Ryota and Jurong. That's all for now cuties, catch you next time!